We declare it's healed. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, everyone, as we continue in our study at, uh, with the Book of Acts Now Global Church and School. We're looking at the Hebrew alphabet uh, here on the screen. And we're, today we're looking at the letter Pei, one of the 22 letters. And uh, it, it kind of looks like a backward G. But this is the letter for Pei. It can be, the sound of it can be either a P or an F. And it means to speak or the mouth to open our uh, beginning. And so we're going to look at some biblical terms, some words that uh, are applying the use of the letter pay to get an idea of how it's used in the Word of God. This is not necessary to open your Bible, but what it does is it gives you a deeper insight as to the intent and meaning of these biblical terms. And so uh, today, we ask the Lord to bless us as we look at these letters and give us understanding. So we have uh, astonish or wonder. So we, you know, we look in the book of Acts and we see signs and wonders. What's the wonder all about? Well, let's take a look. There are three letters that make up um, this word. How many know that the, the words in the Bible did not come first in English? We want to filter everything through the Western mindset. But uh, it came through Hebrew. And, you know, we have New Testament um, manuscripts that are used uh, for the New Testament. But it originally, you know, when Christ was here, he was not speaking in Greek or English. He was speaking Hebrew. And the manuscripts that survived were those uh, from the Greek. And that's why we have uh, Greek manuscripts that people refer to when they're looking at the New Testament. Testament. But, but when, when Christ, Christ was speaking, speaking and he, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, he wasn't speaking that in Greek. He was speaking that in Hebrew. If you want to know what he means... By the way, the truth, the, the life, you need to go back into the Hebrew because that's what he was speaking, Hebrew or Aramaic. Okay, so we have uh, here the, the letter Pe, which had the P sound. Then we have the letter Lamed, and those Hebrew scholars that are here today, what does Lamed mean? Authority. And... Um, and then we have Aleph, which is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, the word picture there is an ox, but we understand that it means the strong one, the father. So if you put those three concepts together, what do you get? To speak of the authority of the father. Listen, when you understand who he is and you have a revelation of him, you will be astonished and you'll see wonder. You know, that's, that's why the Bible writers... Look at the heavens, for example, the works of his hands. And they declare his glory. They declare his wonder. Because you can see it illuminated in the sky. So we say amen. Okay, so then we have the word for beautiful. It's made up of just three letters. And so we have, what's this letter here? Small letter, isn't it? It looks like kind of this section of the arm, right? The elbow. And so it means his work. So it can mean the, the, the work of his hands. Then we have the pay again, which means the mouth or to speak. And then we have this letter. You're reading from right to left in Hebrew. So you have here, hey. And so... The work he speaks reveals himself. And so when you see everything that's in nature was spoken into existence, wasn't it? And so when we see the work of his speech, something is revealed to us about him. And, and so everyone will be held accountable for the knowledge of God, even if they never heard one sermon. Why? Because it's, it's observable by just looking at his works. That's what it says in Romans chapter 1. Everyone will be without excuse because they can see him through, the, through his works of what he spoke into existence. You know, at the end of creation, God stepped back. And what did he say? It is good. Another way to say that in our language is, it's beautiful. It's good. It's 
So really, he was saying of his own works when he stepped back and looked at it, it's beautiful. Unmarred by sin, it was perfection. You're not going to find a duck with a, you know, a busted wing or a deformed beak or anything like that. No, 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 no deformed ducks are allowed in his world. He stepped back and looked at it and said, Beautiful, Donald Duck is not allowed here. Beautiful. Okay, and then uh, redeem. To redeem something, again, we have the pay, which means to speak. See this little letter here underneath the pay? Looks like a small T. That's a valve, and that's the A. And then we have uh, here is what? Dalit, and that uh, is the door. But remember now, where's the blood applied? It's applied on the door. And so it's the place of covenant. And then hey, here again, to declare or to reveal. So these letters all have something to do with understanding what it means to redeem something. How many know that we're supposed to be redeemed? Yeah, by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so redemption is the mouth of the door that gets revealed. Now what's that talking about? What's that have to do with redemption? When you apply the blood on the door of your heart and the door of your life, you will be redeemed. So these word pictures talk to us. See, originally in this language, there were no letters. It was word pictures. Paleo Hebrew. And so then the characters were added later. So when we bring the word pictures to view... It tells us something deeper about the words. Amen? So the idea is when you think about being redeemed, you ought to be thinking about blood on the door. Has my life been redeemed? Have I applied, applied the blood of the Lamb not only on the doorpost of my house, but on the doorpost of my heart? Because He's redeemed it. Now there is a door, doorway of redemption in me. Come on now. And so people may not come to my house to see the door of redemption, but I become a manifestation of the door of redemption. And I can take the door into my city and I can bring redemption to other people. Amen? Who? That, that'll preach. Sister, are you, why aren't you walking with your door today? There's, where's the blood? Brother, when you open your mouth to speak, it reveals what's inside you. And when you open your mouth to speak, is it revealing him that, you, that you've been redeemed? Because look, if your heart's redeemed, your mouth ought to be redeemed. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. I'm not telling dirty things. If my heart's been redeemed, my mouth will reveal it. Because what's in the heart controls the mouth. Amen? Amen? And so we ought to be bearing some fruit if that's the case. And so let's take a look at what makes up fruit here. We've got, again, the pay, right? What's this letter here? Somebody help me. That's the race, which means highest person, our person of the house. And again, we have the tiny little yod sign here, which is his work, right? And so this means to speak of the highest person's work. And so fruit comes when you speak about what's the, one of the highest works that he did for you and me. When he died and offered himself as the Lamb of God and spilled his blood on Mount Calvary. Come on. That's the highest work of the highest person. And so when we speak of that, by the way, this is pronounced um, pari. When we speak of that, you're going to see fruit. Well, I can't speak like that preacher. I can't speak like that elder at the church. I'm just going to keep quiet and not say anything. No, 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 no. All of us are going to bear fruit when we speak about his works. See, in Psalms 105, David writes to speak of the wondrous works of his hands and his miracles. Why? Because they believed in the Hebrew mindset that when you speak about his miraculous works in the past, 
it re-releases the original miracle in that work in the present. That's what a power of a testimony does. And there's somebody out there that needs to hear your testimony who won't relate to mine, but they'll relate to yours. And it re-releases it. So when we speak, to the Lord's Supper applied the Passover feast. And so just like Passover reminded them of the miracle deliverance from bondage in Egypt, and it re-released the power of that deliverance every time they talked about it. The same thing is true with the Lord's Supper. When we partake of it, it's supposed to re-release the power and deliverance that took place on Mount Calvary on the tree. Come on. Especially when it comes with my testimony. When I first understood who he was and it received him into my heart, a miracle took place in me. Now, I don't know what happened with you, but when I first really I knew about religion, come on, but knowing about religion is not the same as being born again and being transformed. And when I had that experience, one of the first things that happened to me, I got hungry. I wanted to know more. I wanted to get in the Word. I wanted to know more, more about Him and prophecy and all of these things. That's a common experience. When He changes your heart, you become a new, what does the Bible say? If anyone in him, he becomes a new creature, a new creation. And so when you get a new heart, you become a new creature, a new creation. You're going to desire his things and not the evil things of the world. And so you want to feed yourself with life. Feed yourself with him and not darkness. Yeah? And, and so I, had a, I was in the military at the time that... Um, my eyes were open to understand him and receive him. I was uh, at the NBC Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, I had seen a program on TV about the, the end times. Surviving the end times was the title that Chuck Smith preached. And then they had this big thing that took place at the arena. And they did an altar call. And I remember sitting back when they did the altar call. I said, yeah, I don't think I'll do that, you know, in front of all these people. But as Sandy Patty, who was there, the great vocalist, making an altar call, and she was singing some song, some beautiful song, I found myself getting up and going down front. And they had people trained to sit down with you and pray with you and present the gospel, and ask you to receive the sacrifice that Christ Yeshua made, and receive him. And so an 18-year-old Air Force girl sat down with me, this Marine, and shared the gospel with me, and I said yes to the work uh, that was done on Mount Calvary for me. And I received Christ into my heart and my life. It was life-changing. And then I wanted more of him and to know and understand all of these other things. Simple, isn't it? Just to confess him and receive him in here changed and made me a new creature. I wasn't the stone-hearted, cold, old, bad, mouth-speaking Marine. Still had some tendencies that needed to be redeemed. God had to redeem my speech and my vocabulary. But I became a changed man that night when I went forward and responded to that altar call. Well, I, you know, I was born this or that when I was a baby. I was born into this home. That doesn't make you a new creature or a Christian or a believer. What makes you a believer and someone who's born again and transformed is you personally have responded to him and put the blood on the doorpost of your heart. That makes you a new person and a new creature, not because you grew up in some tradition. That people tell me that. But you know, I, I grew up in that. Uh, my, my parents were of this denomination. I grew up in that denomination. I've been in that denomination all my life, went to their schools. That doesn't make you a born-again believer. You have to personally respond to him. All right, so to solve 
there are three letters that make up the word solve, and again, we have the pay. Very important letter here. This is the last letter. Looks like an N with a tail on it. You see it? That's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that's the letter Tav. And what does it mean? It means covenant. And then we have Resh. And so we put those three pictures together for Saul. And it says to speak of the covenant of the highest person. Listen, do you want to solve your problems? You get your eyes off your problem and look at the covenant that he made for you on Mount Calvary. And when you look at what he did for you, he will transform and change your world your circumstances. You know, the disciples were out on the lake caught in a storm and their eyes were on the storm. They thought they were going to die and they were going to perish. People that they got, you know, even believers, they got their eyes focused on things that are making them afraid because they're focusing on the wrong thing. You know, the, the pandemic is coming. They've said it's going to be another wave. A second wave is coming. Now, we're going to use precautions and use wisdom and so forth, but we don't run around scared, and we don't have the mob mentality that all the rest of the people have who are dominated by fear. Now, I was at Walmart this week, guys, and this is the month of September, <coughs> 2020. I just needed some paper plates. Today, if you, probably the same thing. If you go down the aisle where the paper plates are, unless you, Unless you got there soon after the truck arrived, the shelves are empty of paper products for, for paper plates. And so the, the guy doing the stocking was there, and I said, hey, you know what, why are all the plates gone? I, we just needed a few paper plates because we ran out. He said, two hours after the truck delivered those, they were all gone. So the, her, the mob, the herd, is now, the last time we got anticipation of this thing they were after the toilet paper couldn't buy any it's all gone you know you can see somebody pulling up in their old pickup truck saying i think i need 500 rolls what you know so nobody else can get any because this guy bought them all they need to limit how many they get right same thing's true under paper plates products and so i just shook my head i thought wow here we go again the mob is running in fear and so you may have to just use the old-fashioned method and use a regular plate. <laughs> Goodness. But listen, when you get your eyes on him in the storm, he'll solve your dilemma and problems. He'll be your defense, your shield, and your buckler, and your healer. Should you come down with something? And so I'm not going to relate to the world I'm relating to him because he's my problem solver, not man. Amen? So today, as we, we think of what it means to speak, pay, what's the best thing we can do? We, we're going to speak of him, the wondrous works of his hands, the things that he's done in, in the past, both in the world and in me, so I will remember to lift up my eyes. And what does it say? In, in Psalms 121, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes into the mountain, for the Lord is my help. And I know where my help comes from. Amen? All right, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the lesson we've learned out of Hebrew today. What it means to speak of you and your wondrous works. Bless us as we apply this. Keep our eyes lifted to you and just not the problems. And give us breakthrough. Because you're the answer and the problem solver. We thank you now for the grace and for your wondrous working power in us. Through the blood of the Lamb we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen.